Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to the Tall Woodworker. In this video, I want to do a tool review of the Rockler Dowel Jigs. Stick around and I'll tell you if this is a tool that you should have for your shop. So before I get started, let me first say that Rockler did not pay me to do this video. They also did not send me anything to do this video. I reached out to Rockler once to try to collaborate on a project and they never responded to that one and that's okay. So I can pretty much still say that I have not been in contact with Rockler in any way, shape or form. So I want to preface this video with that, that this is not a paid review. I paid for this myself and used this to build a project more recently. So in this video, I'm going to talk specifically about the Rockler jig. I'm also going to talk about some of the other products that are similar to it, such as this jig that I got from Amazon. I believe this is from Tay Tools. It's no longer available, but I uh, wanted to at least compare it to that. And also talk about some pros and cons between the build on the Craig jig. And again, Craig has not sponsored me at all, but there's some features about this Craig jig that would be really good on this one. Um, so most of the comparisons though are going to be to the more generic ones that you can find. Uh, and again, this one is by Tay Tools. So the jig is available in three different sizes. There's quarter inch, half inch, and three eighths inch. I obviously, by the three eighths inch label that's on here, went with the three eighths inch size. So it's designed to be used with pretty much any dowels, but Rockler does sell these spiral cut dowels. These do a really good job of holding things together and there's the, the spiral flutes are nice for extra surface area for glue. Whatever jig you get, you receive the same things you see here. You get the jig itself, a standard drill bit, and a stop collar along with an Allen key to set the stop collar. This is again included in any kit you get. They, you get the drill bit and collar for the size. So the Rockler jig is made almost completely of plastic, similar to the Craig jig. Uh, very sturdy plastic though. There's, there's very little flex as I bend on this, which is really good. And it made very straight holes for the glue ups that I'll do. Throughout this video, I'll be showing some footage of a coffee table that I recently built. Unfortunately, most of the footage from that was deleted by some moron. So I can't release the video on that because the entire middle third is completely gone. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but that was a bit of a sad moment. But I can at least show some of the footage in this video. Again, the jig is mostly plastic, but the holes where the drill bit goes through are made of metal and that helps prevent uh, the plastics from getting chewed up as the bit spins through here. The Rockler jig includes these two extensions that can come out. And these are really good for if you want to maintain a perfect corner in your joints. Say if I was going to want these to line up perfectly like that, I could essentially, without having to measure, just line this up and butt it up against that fence, drill my hole, and as long as I put that on the other piece as well, those holes will line up. I did find though that because these are just plastic and they're kind of a press fit, one of these little side pieces had popped off pretty quickly and I actually ended up just not using them at all uh, during the project. And they can come off pretty easily and you don't have to use them whatsoever. Um, just, they're just optional. So I'm going to take them off for the rest of this video because this is how I used it in the actual demonstration videos. So the main idea with using either of these jigs is you line your boards up, you strike a mark across them where you want the dowel to go then you can use that mark as a reference later to drill your holes. On the Rockler jig, as well as the Tay Tools jig, admittedly, they both have three individual lines on them. One references the center point between the two barrels, and the other mark is for the center point of the barrel themselves. I ended up using this more by using one line and one barrel for each one of the dowels. But if you wanted to do a pair of dowels for each marking, you can do that too, just by referencing the center line. The Tay Tools also includes those marks, but they are printed onto this piece of acrylic. And you can already see where uh, some of those, that marking has come off. And that's one of the things I like more about the Rockler jig 
is they're engraved in, not printed on. So you shouldn't have to worry about those fading away in the future. One advantage the Rockler jig also has over the Tay Tools one is the depth gauge underneath the jig itself. This is really useful and a very big miss for the Tay Tools version. It allows you to decide how long you want it to go from the jig itself. You don't have to use a ruler plus the jig together. The ruler is built in. And then all you need to do from here is adjust your stop collar. So if I'm using a two inch dowel, I'll mark that for about one inch, tighten that up, and now it will drill one inch into each side and I can use a two inch dowel. Really like that feature, uh, not having to locate another ruler or other tool or even just a simple uh, setup jig, that makes it really easy to use. The next thing I like about the Rockler jig is this cutout area here. Doesn't seem like much, but this allowed me to push down and in on the board at the same time. And what that means is that when I'm going to apply this to my mark, I can give perfect positive firm pressure on here as I'm lining up, and then I can apply my clamp on it to clamp it down completely. This helped so much. And the fact that there's also not an acrylic window here means that you're not getting any sawdust in the way of seeing your lines. By contrast, if I try to do the same thing with the other drilled block, there's no easy area for me to grip onto. Yeah, I can get all the way down here where this little hole is, but it's not very comfortable. Ow, actually that hurt my thumb just doing that, uh, trying to go push both down and in. Um, and then because there's acrylic here, your sawdust might actually uh, blind your line as you're trying to line this thing up and then clamp it down. So definitely like the bigger grip area here for lining it up. In fact, some of the drilling that I did, I didn't even put a clamp on. I felt so confident by just holding it like this, I was able to drill a straight hole through without a clamp. However, I do recommend the clamp because any little bit of a wander and you're not going to be lined up. Okay, so now what don't I like about this jig? There's one pretty glaring thing and it kind of is a cascading effect. And I'm basically going to skip right to it and say, it's this stop collar. This stop collar sucks. And in my opinion, Rockler should know better than to include this stop collar. So what's wrong with the stop collar? Let's, let's go to the close-up camera. So the stop collar that's included with this has a set screw that goes into the drill bit. And the other problem with the stop collar is, as I just hold it up here, look at all that wiggle room. That's a lot of play as you, when you go, after you tighten this down. So you go and tighten this up onto the shaft of the drill bit. Hey, that's great but you can pretty much already see there, that's not straight at all. And yes, I can rotate that, even though it's tightened down. That's not good. Now, is it a deal breaker? No, because it'll use the furthest in point on here, but then it starts chewing away at the plastics. The other problem with this is, look at how deep the flutes go. This is just a standard drill bit. There's nothing special about it. Let's be completely honest, there is zero special about this drill bit in comparison to what you get in a DeWalt or Milwaukee or any other drill bit kit. There's nothing special about this. If I wanted to do my one inch, my one inch deep cut though, I have to put the stop collar up here where the flutes are. Well, that's not easy to do. Basically, you have to hold the bit in place while you loosen up the collar, then get the collar in an area where it's not going to put the bit into the flute. You need a bite outside here, anywhere else, and this is not going to hang tight. And again, now you have a wobbly bit. Not exactly an ideal situation. It could have been better if they gave you a more specialized drill bit that had shorter flutes. But of course, some people might say, well, what happens if you do want to drill a two inch dowel? Now you're not going to be able to do that. So I understand that. Here's why I say Rockler should have known better. There is another type of collar system that the Tay Tools one has and comes with that works far better. And that is the split collar that 
has the screw going across the drill bit. So when you go to tighten this, it clamps around the bit. It doesn't clamp into the area between the flutes. This is a much more perpendicular clamp on and much easier to deal with. Why should Rockler know better? Well, because this is included in a kit along with six other of these stop collars. They sell this particular piece, yet you have to buy it separately. Well, you've already spent $18 on the dowel jig, so now you're telling me I have to spend another $13 on all these stop collars when really I only need one for the one that I originally get, and maybe I'll take away two more if I get the other two dowel jigs. What am I gonna do with the rest of these? So I really wish Rockler would have included this as part of the kit because their competition did. This is the bit that comes from Tay Tools. They already included one of these. So another area that I think Rockler could have done a little bit better is to take a few notes from the Craig jig. I like using pocket holes in some of my projects. I think they work really well as long as I can hide the pocket. Well, there's a few things I like about the Craig jig that I feel Rockler could have implemented in here. The addition of this whole clamping pad, yes, I know, Craig sells the clamp that goes in here, but the fact that I can slot that in there and not have to worry about repositioning is actually kind of useful. I wish that there was a way of including something like that on the Rockler version. But the thing that I like most about the Craig version is there are these chip shoots right here so that as you're drilling through it, the chips have some place to escape. And that's something that's missing from both of these jigs, actually. You need to constantly drill out a little bit and then back away and then drill in more and then back away. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of chips that build up inside of the flutes. And no matter which one of the uh, collars you use, you will get chips that get lodged up in between the flute and the collar, and that can affect how deep the bit is going to go for the next drilling. If they found a way to include a chip chute, that would have been way better of a solution. Unfortunately, I don't know how they would do that without reducing the size of the barrels that are on here. I'm not saying that it's, oh, this is all you need to do. I'm just saying that it would be nice if they found a way to do that. So I did a bit of a speed comparison between using the Tay Tools jig and the Rockler jig. And I did find that using the Rockler jig, I was a little bit faster in the setups than I was with the Tay Tools jig. So would I recommend the Rockler dowel jigs? Yes, even as they are purchased today, yes, I do recommend these. I really hope that they come out with a new revision of this where they include the proper collar in with the drill bit, not this loose and poorly designed collar. And again, they sell the stop collars, but you have to buy the seven piece set. So I just wish that they had included their own part directly in the purchase. But again, that being said, I would buy this again, no problems. I've got the 3 8 inch one that I was using in some 3 quarter inch material. I would have no problems going out and purchasing the larger or the smaller version of this if the project that I was working on deemed it necessary. So I hope that you found this video informative. I, it's my first tool review video that I've ever done. Again, Rockler didn't sponsor me whatsoever on this and I was planning on doing this one anyway. Unfortunately, this week was supposed to be when I released the coffee table build, but because, again, some moron deleted a third of the footage, um, I'm just not able to, to recover from that. I'll show some after pictures of the project. I feel like it turned out really nice, but that being said, it's still a little disappointing that I lost all the footage from that. So what do you think? Are you going to go out to Rockler and pick up one of these so you can do some edge joinery? Did you like this video? Should I do more of these tool videos? Be sure to drop a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Despite the fact that the coffee table video is gone, uh, I still have some good ideas that are gonna be coming up. And it is September right now, but I still have a few more months before I have to close up my shop for the winter. And uh, so hopefully I'll get some good videos coming out in the next couple of months. Until next time, thanks for joining me in my shop.